We are here in Decatur, Georgia, right outside Atlanta, which is supposed to have a Japanese archery facility. But from the looks of it, we just see a residential household. Hey guys, we are here with Cynthia Kato Shannon, the instructor at the Shingetsu Kudo Dojo here in Atlanta, Georgia. So Cynthia, how did you get into Kudo? Uh, I had two young children, and I think I was probably feeling a little stir-crazy. So I started looking into maybe fencing or riflery, and I found the Kudo, and I liked it. So I stuck with it, so that was about 18 years ago. What do you find so appealing about Kudo? Kudo is very challenging, and you have to be very still. I mean, it's not just still in the movements, it's still internally. For some reason, I just find it fascinating. I like yoga, I like movements, you know, I like breathing with my movements, I used to swim. So this kind of was all of that, but also I like target sports. What made you decide to um, start a dojo? in your own house. The group in Georgia had lost their space. For a while, we all came here, and we had a little four by four stand, not much bigger than a table, and we'd all just one by one get up there, and it just eventually grew. So it seems a lot of the steps and the discipline in Kudo, is, it's almost like a martial art. It is considered a martial art. It's mm. considered one of the highest. It would be similar to tea ceremony. Every movement is with a breath. Every movement, your mind should be present in that movement. Part of this is controlling one's energy, key. They often say that the martial art is 100% technique and 300% spirit. So you really have to learn to control your spirit. <laughs> it sounds kind of religious, yeah. but how to, um, how, to, how to focus. So these movements they do are not just a ritual. They're to build key. They're to build one's internal energy. So that by the time that you're in full draw, those things have all begun to meet. And you're structurally at a point where all of this is about ready to burst. If you can keep your mind during that, you can send that arrow down with power and beauty. If the mind thinks, oh, I'm going to hit it, or oh, I'm going to be this or that or so important, and you get off of the fact that you're present in the movements, you're present in the very energy of the shot. If you lose that, you've lost the shot. There's something called, there's um, one life, one arrow. It talks about the importance of all of that focused into that explosion of spirit and key. I don't want you to move when I push. Firm the back of your legs and your butt. Good. Back of your legs and the butt. More. Good. Every single movement we do is a breath. So when I look at the target, it's inhale, exhale. When I begin Ashabumi, and you follow me, inhale, exhale. I'm scooping up, now. Just so you feel the natural stop. The way of shooting is with the bone. See how my bones are taking the pressure of that? It's going straight up my arm. That's what we want. Now add, let the bow turn as you push it. Let it turn in your hand. Okay, open. Cynthia, thank you so much for being with us. Yeah. And is there a way for our viewers to find you online? We have a website, um, www.shingetsu-kudo.com. So we're here with Cynthia Kato Shannon at the Shingetsu Kudo Dojo here in Atlanta, Georgia. Team SNS signing out. Peace. Hey guys, I'm Steven. And I'm Sully. And we are here at the Center for Puppetry Arts. Let's go check out some puppets, Sully. Let's do it.
Hey, how's it going? I'm Sully. Hey, Jeremy Underwood. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Steven. Hey, Steven. Jeremy Underwood. Nice to meet you. So what exactly is this place? We're the largest nonprofit organization dedicated to puppetry arts in the U.S. Wow. Yeah. You guys want to take a look at some puppets? Yeah! Sure. All right, follow me. Steven, look out! Oh, oh. <laughs> wow. Look at the size of those legs, man. Well, watch out, Sully. Come on in. Whoa. Thanks. <laughs> This is our puppet storeroom. It's a recreation of what our production storeroom looks like. We have some puppets in here from our, our plays that we do here at the center, and we also have some puppets from our museum collection. Like, What was that? Eleven of these puppets move. <laughs> Just randomly? Just randomly. <laughs> That's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> this puppet was made by Theodora Skipateris. She's a um, pretty well-known um, contemporary New York City puppeteer. You can see this puppet's pretty realistic looking. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. This is a portion of our Chinese hand puppet collection. This castle looking thing, is this the stage that they This is the stage on? that they performed on. Yeah. These puppets are pretty cool. They, they have articulated hands. There are little strings that are running through the puppets so the puppeteer could manipulate the hands by having them grasp things. These puppets would smoke. They would spin plates. They would do Holy Chinese ac cow. acrobats. It was pretty interesting. These are two Japanese Bunraku puppets. The female here is Osome, and she dates back to about 1828, so it's a pretty old puppet. Wow. Whenever a, a Bunraku puppet changes hands, the face is, is cleared, and then the face is repainted and redone. And so in, essentially the wood and the spirit of the puppet is from about 1828, but the painting on the front of the face is probably a little bit newer than that. So are these puppets with puppets? <laughs> These are puppets with puppets. They were used in a Fraggle Rock episode. Um, Fraggle Rock was made by the Jim Henson Company. Some of the puppets that he made um, had detachable eyeballs and noses. These were called whatnot Muppets or anything Muppets. Um, he would just make a core figure and then change the facial features to change characters from male to female in a matter of seconds. The puppets of many faces. <laughs> now we're in the world of Labyrinth. But this is Sir Didymus, he was the gatekeeper and he was animated and interesting. Now since we had interaction with humans and puppets, we needed to make these more animatronic puppets, so remotely controlled puppets rather than having these long cables coming out of the bone behind the puppets. And they were very innovative for the time, the technologies they were using were sort of introducing them to film and television, um, but they didn't really do too well at the box office. But now it's just like a cult classic with this generation that's growing up with it now. I mean, all my friends, and I'm sure all your friends know this film. Oh, I mean, yeah, oh, yeah. Definitely. There's even a manga for it. There is. So what is this right here? This is a Skeksis. It was used in the film Dark Crystal, which premiered in 1982. It was a, it was a film directed by Jim Henson. How the heck did they man this thing? <laughs> it's actually pretty complicated. There was one puppeteer inside, and there was probably between four to eight different puppeteers controlling these cables that were coming out from, from underneath the puppet. Wow, those puppets are like seriously creepy. Dude, that praying mantis one? That yeah. scared the bejesus out of me. Well, Jeremy, thank you very much. Thank you guys, thanks for stopping by. Once Sorry. again, we are with Jeremy Underwood, the curator of the Center for Puppetry Arts, Team SNS, signing out in Atlanta, Georgia. Twice. The entire mural took about two and a half to three hours. I'd never done a mural before or colored with um, pastels on a wall before, so that was a cool learning experience. Actually, we were coming up with techniques on the spot, which was interesting because it was like a very grainy wall and we had very fine pieces of chalk that we had to use like very sparingly. And so we came up with this technique of just like dabbing it on the wall and just rubbing it with our fingers, which made it like blend into the wall. I kind of wish we had a little more time to do some line cleanup and stuff like that, but like we got the whole idea across. There was just probably some like nitpicky editing things we could have done, but uh, other than that I thought it was pretty good.